Hello. Good morning, Mr. Bruce Campbell. How are you, sir? Good morning, Lubbock, Texas. Uh, you know, the uh, the number one thing I had to think about when I heard I was going to get to uh, interview Bruce Campbell was, is what is the proper amount of fawning? How much fawning can I get away with? Um, just take it to the edge. Don't go over. Uh, the edge. Battle the edge. The Edge, you like to call yourself a B-movie actor, but you know what? I don't have any George Clooney action figures in my house, but I got plenty <laughs> Bruce that's Campbell. True. Now that's you make a good point there. I wonder how many George has. Uh, probably zero. Meanwhile, I've got a closet full of them right now, and it's <laughs> ge- it's generational. My daughter just finished hosting the uh, Bubba Hotep revival over at wow. Alamo. Oh, my God. I love your daughter. Yeah. Uh, j- Sounds like a classy kid. You, you know, I just don't like uh, the sound of Ash saying he loves my daughter. That's a little bit weird. Yeah, that is. That's bad, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, the new Thanks book is uh, Hail to the Chin. And, um, Bruce, I got to tell you, I don't recall ever sitting in a chair and reading a book ever beginning to end. Okay. And you didn't with this either, right? N- no, I did it. So uh, either the letters are large or you tell a pretty good story. There's lots of pictures, too. Don't forget that. (laughs) I'm glad you read it. Good. I'm glad. I I really, really... It helps you with your sleep. Yeah. It's got lots of great stories from behind the scenes. And and the one that haunts me uh, about projects that happened and didn't happen, the one that haunts me is the the nightcap. Yeah, it would have been fun because as a kid, uh, we all, in our local towns, almost everybody had a Goulardi, um, one of these guys. We had the Ghoul, and they would show movies at night and do skits in between, and it was always over the top. And what, another guy we had was Sir Graves Gasly. So it was a chance to do a, a show uh, for USA initially, or for sci-fi, you know, one of those. Um, that was, it, it was, a, you're, you're showing those fun movies at night and having good guests, and you talk about them, and you kind of make fun of them. And, so it didn't go, but there's lots of reasons why things go and don't go. It's really interesting. I think it's because you missed the tagline, and we'll show only Bruce Campbell movies. <laughs> Maybe that's what killed it. Now, um, what I got to ask you, I got to put you on the spot here a little bit, oh. since we are personal friends now, and you're dating my daughter. Okay. Uh, Ash versus Evil Dead, season three. What's going on? Um, the higher-ups have to decide. They're trying to figure out the best time to set a new air date, potentially. So that's uh, basically where we're at right now, but it's in the can, correct? Oh, yeah, baby. And it's uh, 90 miles an hour. We're very happy. This season, uh, hopefully you and your daughter will pick your jaws up off the floor at the end of this season. Yeah, I, I really, in season one, I th- was so satisfying, and then season two took everything up a level. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, season three, we're going to do a little more mythology. Because, you know, don't forget, Ash is not just a loser in a trailer home. He is foretold in an ancient book. Why? We're getting into the Joseph Campbell of it a little bit. Figure Uh, this out. I also noticed during the show, uh, during season one, we kind of saw what we expected in the first episode was that Ash was a little rough, a little out of shape. And and somewhere along the line, you shaped up. (laughs) No, not really. Not not really. uh, Because I'm deep down a method actor, I realized, oh, wait, I don't really have to get in shape for Ash. (laughs) And I like the fact that story-wise, it has nothing to do with me as a person, I like the fact that the hero, A, who caused all of this in the first place, is now completely not ready to save the world. This is when he's ready to kick back, drink beer at his trailer, and, you know, mind his beeswax. But no, no, you got to go save the world. That's what I like about it. I would really recommend everybody pick up a subscription to Stars and pick up the DVDs of the now, previous granted, episodes. Know what you're getting into. This is technically unrated television. So <laughs> if you recommend Granny to watch it, you might want to check it out first. Yeah. Uh, it's, got a, it's, it's got, we hope the humor helps the horror go down. Do you have a favorite kill from the series? Not a favorite kill. I, I, I thought one of the most effective scenes from, from season two was being pulled up a cadaver's butt. By a, a possessed colon. <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. That was pretty good. I was going to kind of go for the uh, the car tire to the head, but yeah, the colon thing, yeah, that's up there too. Yeah, that's a bucket list. <laughs> the new book is called Hail to the Chin, and of course, Bruce has got a couple other great ones out there for you. Uh, if Chins Could Kill, and of course, Make Love the Bruce Campbell Way. Bruce, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us today, and, and it really means a lot to us fans that you, you still get 
out there and mix it up with everybody. Oh, it's important to you. Got to get out there and see what see what the great unwashed is up to. You know. And tell your daughter I respectfully say hello. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bruce Campbell, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank T- you. Take care.